Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to show you the process of these three little ACO cards for the Bad Apple Artists Collective Auction starting today July 28th and ending July 31st at 11 p.m. Berlin time at the Bad Apple Artist Collective Facebook page. I will have a link down in the description to the auction so if you like to bid on these little cards you can just follow the link real quick before we start. For in-depth painting tutorials, head over to my Patreon page and select the $5 reward tier. You get instant access to over 30 painting tutorials, which you can download, insights into my working progress, helpful art material posts, and I answer all of your questions. For $10 a month, you get exclusive access to my live stream and real-time painting videos. For $15 and more, you get beautiful art surprises, fine art prints, original watercolor illustrations, and much more. And another thing, my first ever t-shirt is currently on pre-sale on my website and the pre-sale goes until July 30 and after that it won't be available so don't miss it. It's definitely a challenge to paint so small but I thought well I will I will do it. And for these little pieces I decided to go with the Kuratake watercolor set. I recently did a review of them and I was pretty surprised how interestingly they behave and how different they work from other watercolors and I was very curious how I would be able to use them with my technique and I was positively surprised. So it happened that this watercolor set seems to be very good for beginners because I'm basically when I paint with watercolors I finish one area and then I when I want a gradient for example and in the face and when I want to have shade and skin tones I start one area then I super super quickly try to fill that area out then I have three seconds before the edge of the watercolor dries then I have to mix quickly another color go to the edge of the watercolor and connect the water so that the edge doesn't dry this is super stressful my watercolor technique is really really quick sometimes in difficult areas I'm I'm a bit stressed out because I don't want to have edges there and in the last areas I play with the edges so I just let the edges be I don't pay so much attention on it so this is this is good but in the face I it's stressful <laughs> I admit so I was surprised when I painted with the Kura Taka ones that you just it doesn't matter so you can always correct every edges you do you can remove or redo any mistake and any fault you've you've did and this is not normal with watercolor so for every beginner Beginner, um, these watercolors should be pretty easy to use because if you don't like what you did um, you can just go over it with water and pull off all the watercolor from the paper until it's almost white so if you don't like an edge you can just pull it off with a wet brush or with a paper towel and that's it the only thing that doesn't work with these paints is that you can't layer because as I said the color gets reactivated so what I just did is that I just put <laughs> used more paint and more color and fill in if I wanted to have a darker color in an area where I wanted to have it and what I also did is that I combine my watercolor technique with white gouache because one of my essential like style elements are flowers in my paintings and flowers or butterflies and when I paint flowers I just can't <laughs> I can't paint every single individual flower petal because I'm just so impatient. I can't do it. I try to do it and I have to force myself, but it feels so wrong to me. So what I do is just that I use different techniques with my brush to make those more loose flower petals. And it is the same technique that I use with oil paints. It's basically the same technique. And But what I need for this technique is my gouache color because gouache has a very, very lovely like consistency it's almost like oil paint and it is opaque pretty much opaque and I can go over places where I already painted with watercolors what I had to now be a bit careful or aware is that I don't go over those areas where I painted the Kurataka watercolors because they would be reactivated through the gouache color because it gets reactivated instantly gouache color as well if you paint with 
squash on paper and you go over it with watercolor, it gets reactivated instantly. So when I wanted to apply glitter, for example, at the end, I have to spray at least two or three layers of spray varnish, pastel spray varnish on these little paintings until I can go over them with glitter. So after all, this was a very wonderful um, experiment for me and I came to the conclusion that for beginners they are great, but when you then switch to normal watercolors, you might be surprised and it might be frustrating for you. But you don't ever have to switch, so you can just stay with those and make and just use their abilities. I heard, however, that the Kuratake watercolors are not light fast, so they might fade under direct sun. Sunlight. Um, you can test it when you just make, for example, color swatches and put them on a windowsill where you have all the sun, like a windowsill facing to the south, for example. A patron told me that they are not 100% light fast, so I wouldn't hang watercolor paintings or just any sort of painting in direct sunlight. Even if you have oil paintings, it is bad for them to hang them on a place where you have the sun always hitting the canvas. This is not good. So when I see, for example, that when I have a large painting and there's a little light window or something that appears always at the same spot on my painting, I just hang the painting on a different area because this little spot, it might change the colors on this area. So art in general is just delicate and it's normal that it won't sustain forever, especially watercolor paintings. The best what you can do with watercolor paintings is either hang them in a darker room or to be super super secure, put them in a drawer or maybe just not in a room where like direct sunlight is hitting your painting. So I've been like storing my older artwork in a drawer because I kind of don't tend to hang my own art on the walls and I didn't use like expensive watercolor but they still look wonderful and nothing has faded but as I said they were in a drawer. So watercolor from William Turner, for example, are like safely secured in dark bunkers to prevent the colors to fade and the paper to rot. Um, yeah, so in general art is just delicate and you have to take care of it, but I think I don't have to tell you that you know that already. And something about the technique of these little ACOs. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, by the way. I just guessed it is pronounced that way. You let me know if I pronounced it wrongly. <laughs> what I really tend to do lately is that I use a mixed media technique based on like too many materials, to be honest. <laughs> so I'm starting with watercolors, then I use color pencils, then in between acrylic inks, mostly the white and white gouache. And I do that because each of those material have different characteristics and abilities that watercolor doesn't have. So I just get used to all these different things that I can do with the different materials that I don't want to give up all the things that I discovered. For example, acrylic inks, they have a great vibrancy and they are more opaque than gouache color in white and white watercolor. So if I want something to be as white as possible or if if I want to cover a mistake up, mo most of the time is that I have highlights on the face and somehow even if I go over them with color pencils, I get smudges or it gets stained through my hand or some other like mistakes and then white ink, white acrylic ink saves the day. But the downside of the acrylics is that when it dries, it is like plastic and I can't really go over it or draw over it with color pencils or with a normal pencil. So I don't use that to fill out the rest of the painting, obviously. For that I use watercolor and with watercolor I can go over with color pencils. I can really use all the advantages that color pencils give me. For example, those little shades and subtle color variations that are not possible with watercolors because they make edges and sometimes I just don't want to have edges. And then the gouache colors, as I already said in the beginning, until now I I'm still using white gouache 
And this is perfect because I can mix white gouache with every watercolor that I have, with every color tone, and then I have those beautiful pastel tones. And they are opaque, they are relatively opaque, not perfectly, but it is sufficient for most things. For example, hair. When I kind of messed up the hair structure and I was too loose, I can just paint individual hair strings with gouache and it already looks better. So just these different abilities from those materials, I just don't want to miss them. So I combine them all in one. I kind of developed this technique over the last years and I just started with watercolors and color pencils. And since I am an artist for the last 10 years, I'm just collecting and hoarding art material. And I used everything what I have when I <laughs> made a mistake or I got desperate and I thought, oh God, how, do, how can I fix it? And then I try out all my materials that I have. And with this kind of method, I discovered so many things that I can do. And for beginners, I would really just recommend to start with watercolors and color pencils. And then you can slowly kind of build up your skills. You can maybe buy different art materials. You don't have to just jump in and buy like everything that I have. This is not, not I don't recommend that because you have to get used to the feel of watercolor and to the feel of color pencil. And if you have fully explored their potential, then you can see, okay, here is something that lacks and that I don't, that I miss. And then I would say it is a point that you buy other art materials in addition. And I found it very helpful to have the experience in oil painting because I know what is possible with oil paintings. So with oil paint, almost everything is possible. The only thing that I don't have is like the control I have with color pencils. So when I want to really make those fine lines and details and I turn the painting and have the perfect control, this is difficult with oil paintings and also like the drying time is so annoying. Sometimes I just want to paint and continue painting and it just, I just have to wait. So anyways, it is super, for me at least, super helpful to know what is possible with art materials. And then I see what other art materials lack, so what they don't have. And then I can see, okay, I might just expand their abilities with buying different materials or I'd stay in their realm and try to get the most out of it. So it's super interesting just to work with different materials. And yeah, I think this is what just makes every day as an artist super fun and super exciting. Oh, and I recently started the Amazon affiliate program because I was curious and I thought, why not? I'm anyways linking all my materials down in the description. And if you like to support me but you just don't have the ability to support me on Patreon, what I can totally understand, but you still are buying art materials from time to time, you could just use some of the links I have in the description. So I have like the Kura Taka watercolor set there, my paper and the colors that I use for blending and for skin tones. So yeah, if you like to do that, go ahead. Um, I appreciate that you are all wonderful. Like all your comments I get in the, uh, in the comment section. It's just <laughs> warms my heart and I'm so so happy that I decided to do YouTube and that I found all of you even if I don't answer all of your comments or even private messages it is just because I have so much to do I'm just constantly um, fighting against deadlines and trying to get the most as possible finished and still maintaining the quality of my art or even try to improve on the quality and making YouTube videos so please don't be frustrated or sad if I don't answer your comments. Even if you, some, some of you, they write like so long and so like informative comments. It's crazy. I'm so thankful for that. I think it is super helpful for all the other people watching and listening to my videos. Sometimes in the comment section, there are really treasures that you can find. Super helpful tips. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for that. And yeah, I hope you have a great day and you are inspired. And and if you like my video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I see you in the next one. Bye bye.